What's up guys? Today's video is going to be about how to learn technical things, whether you don't know anything about the subject or only know a little bit. There is a tried and proven method to learning technical things, which I'm going to show you today. You're not going to want to miss anything, and at the end of the video, I'm even going to give you some methods that I use that let me learn these things as efficiently as possible. Be sure to like and subscribe because I'm going to give you a lot of great info in this video. And real quick, I want to talk big picture because the framework for learning technical things should be the same framework you use for learning anything, really. What you want to do first is you want to learn the techniques, the skills, the footworks, the shooting form, everything you need to know before you actually start putting it into practice. But at the same time, you can only spend so much time reading books about something or watching somebody else do it to learn how to do it. Eventually, you're going to have to do it yourself. Videos, lectures, books, all that stuff is fantastic for getting you started. But at some point, you're going to have to jump in there and start actually doing it if you want to master it. And both pieces are very important. You can't do one without the other. So what you need to do is learn as much as you need and then start doing your own projects. Which is why when you're learning technical things, the best way to learn is by doing. The very first thing you're going to do is figure out exactly what you want to learn. A lot of people come up to me and say, Greg, I want to learn Python. And then I say, well, what do you want to do with it? And they just say, well, I want to learn Python. I know it looks good. Well, in order to learn something the best, you need to figure out what you want to learn it for. Because Python is one of the most versatile languages out there. You can use it for web development, data analysis, automation, many things. So figure out what you actually want to use that language for. And then when you figure that out, take an online course on that. You're going to see a lot of courses. I'll use Python again as an example. But say you wanted to use Python, and then you realize you want to use it for data analysis. Take courses that say intro Python for data analysis. There's plenty of them out there. You'll be able to find courses tailored to exactly what you want to learn. Because there's over an overabundance of courses, you'll easily find one tailored for exactly what you want to learn. Now when you're looking for courses, there's going to be a lot of options. There's going to be courses that you're going to see on Coursera, Udemy, EDX, uh, LinkedIn Learning. There's so many different providers of online learning these days. And honestly, all of them are pretty reputable. So don't stress too much about selecting the actual course. Just check the reviews, check the syllabus, and make sure the course is right for you. Now courses are great because they're going to provide you with structured learning which is very hard to get outside of school. It's going to provide you with a good way to learn concepts and the order in which they sh should be learned. So it's going to teach you the basics first and then go into harder more difficult concepts at the end. And this structured learning is going to really help you grasp the concepts well. Now as you're doing these courses it's going to be tempting to rush through them and skip the homework but those are actually the most important parts of courses and it's interesting that a lot of these are optional or you can just kind of check them off that you did it even though the course won't check you did it but please do not do that those are the most important things those are the only things in the courses that are going to give you hands-on experience and that you're actually going to be able to do a little bit of program or doing a little bit of work with whatever you're trying to learn you know, watching the videos is going to be great. That's where you soak the information. But those homework assignments is going to be the only places where you can actually use what you're learning. So do not skip those. I know it's going to be tempting. I've been guilty of that myself. But don't skip those. Also, while you're doing your course, use YouTube, Google, Stack Overflow, and any other online resource to help supplement that. Now, courses can vary in length. Sometimes they take a few weeks. Sometimes they even take a few months. Just remember to push through and get all the information that you can out of the course. Now I think sometimes people make a mistake of they take one course, they take another course, they take another one. But I would say just take one course, teach you the basics, and after that start doing a project. Because from doing projects, that's really where you're going to learn. Projects are the way you're going to get hands-on experience and you're actually going to work with what you learned. So, I would start doing research about what people in your field are doing as projects. For me, for machine learning stuff, there's a lot of sample projects on Kaggle that you can look around and get a good idea of how to do your own project or maybe mimic somebody else's project, use the same data set and create your own version of that project. Find something you want to predict, find something you want to explore and make sure it's something interesting to you. 
If you don't care about flowers, don't predict the petal lengths of iris flowers. If you don't care about housing prices in Portland, don't predict housing prices in Portland. Working with data that you actually care about is the best way to ensure that you're actually going to finish the project and do a good job with it. For my first project, I actually did data exploration. It wasn't predictive, it was an analysis of some of the best basketball players of all time. It was analysis of Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James, and comparing their stats to each other. And this was something I was seriously very interested in. It was very interesting to work on. It didn't even feel like work at all. And doing this project taught me way more about coding and doing analytical projects than any course or any other thing could have. Other projects that I've done that are even on this channel have been where I've taken a data set of NFL games and predicted the winner of NFL playoff games. And it's very important to do your project from start, which means finding a project, finding something to predict or to explore that actually has use and practical value and then completing that and actually getting the insights or the findings from that project that you did. Because doing all that is way more important than being able to memorize syntax. And once you finish your project, you're gonna wanna put it up on GitHub or Kaggle. Mines are on GitHub. That way you have a link that you can easily put on your resume or send out to employers so that people can actually see your work and see your project. Now when you're done with that, third thing is rinse and repeat. Either go back, now you can take another course, now you can start learning or getting that knowledge in your head again, and then do another project. Or instead of going back and taking another course or learning that, just do another project. Because each project you will realize how much it is that you actually don't know about the subject that you're trying to learn. Each project is gonna be different and it's gonna teach you a whole lot of what you didn't know. Now. Here are some hacks on how to learn this and how to do this stuff as fast as you can. To learn something as efficiently as possible, something that you're gonna want to do is learn how to learn effortlessly. So this type of learning online courses and doing um, your own projects, that's gonna take a lot of effort, it's gonna take time. It's physically time cut out of your day when you're probably already doing work or going to school or something like that. So what you need to do is figure out a way to learn without taking time out of your day. And there's about two to three ways that I figured out how to do this. Number one is to get on your Instagram, I know you got it, all your social media, Twitter, whatever, and start following accounts related to what you want to learn. There's plenty of technical accounts on every social media platform. Follow those accounts related to what you will learn. And as you're scrolling through Instagram every day, as you're scrolling through Facebook, Twitter, whatever you're on, their posts are gonna pop up and read that post and then you can go back to scrolling. At the time where I was really trying to learn machine learning, all of my Instagram was just flooded with different posts from these machine learning um, accounts. And every day I would just see posts about different model types, how to score these models, and a lot of educational posts that were just in my timeline. And it really, really, really helped me learn fast and efficiently. And another thing I did was start downloading podcasts. So when I'm in the car, I'm already in the car, it's not taking time out of my day, I put on a podcast and then I start learning that technical thing through the podcast. So this one might be a little more difficult because you're gonna have to find a podcast that's going to explain to you what you're learning. But from just me doing a few quick Google searches, I found a lot of podcasts talking about what I'm trying to learn. And as I'm just sitting in the car doing nothing, information is being shoved in my head right then and there. And this is another great hack because it takes no extra time out of your day and your knowledge is just gonna grow. And another one that maybe you can do is download apps on your phone. If you're learning how to program, there's a lot of apps on your phone like DataCamp and a few other ones that are gonna quiz you and help you learn different syntaxes for coding. So this one might take some time out of your day, but if you're on your phone, instead of playing a game, maybe you could work on one of the apps and take these quizzes. Or if you're sitting in a waiting room or you have a job where you're just sitting around a lot, those are great ways to actually learn when you're just sitting around doing nothing. My last hack for y'all is something that also changed my life set goals and tell people about them. Now I say set goals, write them down. You know, write them down with a piece of pencil and paper. 
Write down what you want to learn, when you want to learn it by, and what you want to be able to use it for. Write how proficient you want to be by the end of your whole learning experience. Like I want to learn Java by this time and I want to be able to do this, this, and this with it. Hear me out? Tell people about it. Now one of my boys, we were in college and this man was just talking my ear off for the semester. I was saying, I'm getting a 4.0 this semester. I'd be like, yeah, things are gonna look good once I get this 4.0 at the end of the semester. And I'd be like, I can't wait to go out at the end of the semester after I get this 4.0. After a while, you're like, shut up. But you know what he did that semester? He got that 4.0. And the reason why is because he had told so many people about it that he couldn't let them down. He couldn't look stupid after telling everybody what he was gonna do. And it works, it works. Tell people about your goals because then you're gonna think twice about quitting on them. You're gonna think twice about loafing because you told so many people about it, you can't quit. And it's gonna push you and it's gonna drive you. And hopefully you have great people around you that will support your goals and even help you do them. So set goals and let people know about it. It'll hold you accountable.